What's going on everybody? Greg Peters with the Car Passion Channel here and today I'll be installing another bolt-on modification to my NB Miata in the form of adjustable cam gears. So today's video will be all about what these things are, how they work, how to adjust them, how to install them, and some specific details you need to know about based on the year of your Miata's engine. So I hope you're ready to make some horsepower. Let's jump into this. First, let's talk about the job of a cam gear, okay? So your engine's running and your crankshaft is turning a belt and that belt is turning these cam gears and then the cam gears turn the camshafts, right? And then the camshafts control when the valves open and close. Now, right up front here, cam timing and ignition timing are two completely different things that all get lumped into one item that people call timing. So ignition timing is the part of the engine's rotation where the spark plug fires and cam timing is when the valves are opening and closing. Now they are related but different. So, okay, anyways, the cam gear and the camshaft traditionally are locked to each other, okay? When the cam gear spins, the cam spins, they're always at the same angle relative to each other. That is until you add an adjustable cam gear. So now what you can control is the cam's position relative to the cam gear. So watch this. Now, I can rotate that cam relative to the cam gear. So the Miata engine spins clockwise. So if I spin the cam even farther clockwise, I have advanced the timing of this cam, whether it be the intake cam or the exhaust cam, which means the valves are gonna open sooner and they're gonna close sooner in the engine cycle. And then you can rotate this wherever you want it, and then you use the bolts to lock this thing into place. Some Miatas, AKA 2001 to 2005, have VVT on the intake or variable valve timing. That means this cam can change its position to any position you tune it to at any time, any RPM, any throttle. That's why the VVT engines have that big old cam gear because internally they have this same amount of uh, rotation. So what exactly is the point of changing your cam timing or when the valves open and close? Even though the valves are still gonna be opening the same amount as they were before, changing when they open and close can affect the power band. And what that means is you're either gonna gain or lose torque in the low RPM or the mid range or the high RPM. And many people's argument against adjustable cam gears is that, hey, Mazda got it right from the factory. They knew what they were doing. But maybe for your driving preference or for how your engine is built or tuned, you want to change that. And that's where adjustable cam gears come in handy. As far as tuning these cam gears and seeing how much they can shift the power around, you're going to have to wait for the next dyno day, which for me is actually tomorrow. You guys will probably see it in about a week. Now, there are some nuanced differences between not only installing the cam gears, but especially adjusting them based on what generation your Miata is. And every engine is a little bit different. The B6, the BP05, the BP4W, and the BP6D all have something different about them that you need to be aware of when you're adjusting your cam gears. So the 90 through 93, or the 1.6 liter NA, and the 94 through 97, the 1.8 liter NA, both get their crank position signal from something called the CAS, which is located on the back of the engine. Now the 1.6 liter gets it from the intake cam, the 1.8 liter gets it from the exhaust cam. And that's important because on a 1.6 liter, if you are adjusting the exhaust cam, you don't have to worry about it altering the ignition timing. But if you're adjusting the intake cam, when you adjust the cam relative to the gear, you're also changing the position of the crank angle sensor and that's altering your ignition timing. So when you adjust the cam, you have to offset the ignition timing by the same amount. And the same is true for the 1.8 liter NA, except on the exhaust side. On the intake cam, you can adjust it freely. You don't have to worry about anything. But if you adjust the timing of the exhaust cam on the 1.8 liter NA, you have to offset the cast either mechanically or in the tuning software to compensate for the new angle of the cam. 
Now, when it comes to the NB1 or the 99-2000 Miata engine, also known as the BP4W, they actually pick up the cam angle signal from the cam gear. You can see it's actually got these two dots right here and one dot on the bottom. There's a sensor that sits in front of this gear that picks up every time the cam goes around it. So that's good and bad. When you pick up the ignition signal from the cam gear, it doesn't matter what angle the cam is at, only the gear. So when you're adjusting the cam, the engine doesn't know any different. It's only firing the spark based on the position of the gear. But that brings one new thing into the equation. And it was a slight mistake that I made, which is why I have three adjustable cam gears. See, I thought I was going to be crafty and save $30 by buying the OBX cam gears. Now these cost $170 for two. But what I didn't take into consideration is they don't have the raised bumps on them for the NB1 cam sensor. So if I install this adjustable cam gear onto my NB, there's now no pickup for the cam sensor. So there are two solutions to this. You can either convert over to a 36-2 trigger wheel and then make the necessary change inside of your standalone ECU software, and then you can run just off a crank sensor alone. The main issue with that is the upgraded trigger wheel is $45, bringing my total to $215. And what I should have done to begin with is buy the Flying Miata adjustable cam gear. And if you take a close look, you can see it's got the timing bumps on it for the NB1 cam sensor. And the Flying Miata adjustable cam gears are $100 each, so it would have cost me just $200 for the pair. So what I should have done to begin with, what I did is I bought one Flying Miata gear and I'm gonna run the OBX gear on the exhaust cam. And of course I got a spare, which I could put onto the exhaust cam of the NA and play with the cam timing there. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not. But anyways, let's talk about the NB2. The NB2 has VVT, so it's got infinitely variable cam timing on the fly controlled by the ECU up to, I believe it's 44 degrees of adjustment. So that can all be controlled inside the ECU, but you can install an adjustable cam gear onto the exhaust cam. So you can optimize the timing on that side if you want to. So the NB2 actually has the cam angle sensor on the back of the camshaft, and I believe it uses that for the VVT, so it knows where the cam is in relation to the crankshaft. But it's really irrelevant anyways, because you would never put an adjustable cam gear onto a VVT engine. Not that you even could, that they don't make them, because there'd be no point. In fact, if you could do VVT on both cams, that would be the best of both worlds. But anyways, that is enough chatting about these cam gears. What do you say we jump into the NB and get them installed? To install adjustable cam gears, you will need to remove your valve cover, upper and possibly lower timing covers, the intake, and have the ability to reset up your timing belt. Now, since I've been doing that in basically every video lately, I'm not gonna show that process in this video, but I will link down below videos that show you how to do all that in detail. Today, I'm only focusing on the adjustable cam gears themselves and the specific things you need to know about installing them. As you can see here, I will be setting up the timing belt the fast way, which is only removing Removing the upper timing cover. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you will have to remove the water pump pulley and the accessory belt and the lower timing covers. It's easier that way, but I've done this so many times that I can just do it the fast way. Nuance detail number one. If you remember from my previous video, I just did an X intake cam swap, which requires the modification of the stock cam gear by drilling this hole. Yes, especially with adjustable cam gears, you don't need to drill them. You can just count the teeth and rotate it and figure it out from there, but I'm going to drill this so the cam gear sits on the engine the way it's supposed to and all of the timing marks just line up because that's how I want to do it. And yes, it hurts me just as much as it hurts you to see a hole drilled in a hundred dollar adjustable cam gear, but once it's on the engine, you'll never know the difference. Side note, someone did bring to my attention that the KA injection adjustable cam gears already are pre-drilled for the X intake cam swap. Now I have no experience with these gears, so I don't know if they're good quality or not, but I just want to let you know that they do exist. The next concern is the fact that the OBX cam gears do not have any timing marks on them at all. So I had to make my own and it was a little bit trickier than I thought because at least according to my measurements, the timing marks don't even sit the same way on the teeth as the factory cam gears. You can see here that the timing mark is not in the center of the tooth, but it is actually offset. The timing mark on the OBX cam gears actually sits in the center of the tooth. Now it's not really that big of a deal because again, they are adjustable, but the fact that they have 
no timing marks at all is kind of annoying. The FM cam gears, on the other hand, have the timing marks in the factory location, so it makes the install that much easier. Putting the adjustable cam gears on the engine is exactly the same as the factory gears. You just put them onto the cam, tighten the bolt to about 40 foot-pounds, set up your timing belt, and the only additional thing you want to check is make sure the actual adjustment bolts on the cam gears are tight because you don't want those to come loose while you're driving. One last thing I noticed on the OBX cam gears is you have these little tick marks to show how far the cam is advanced or retarded. The A standing for advance and the R standing for retard, but this is a generic seeming part because for the Miata specifically with its clockwise engine rotation, the A actually is retarded and the R is advanced. So it doesn't really make a difference when you're tuning them on the dyno because you're going to tune them in the direction that makes the power that you want it to, but it's just something to take note of. Now, technically you could just button everything back together and you'd be done, but if you're actually going to be tuning your adjustable cam gears, you're going to want easy access to them. So the common way to do this is to make a valve cover cut. This will allow you to make quick cam timing adjustments while you're on the dyno. Bit of a side note here, I was a little concerned when I removed my valve cover and saw that there was kind of oil everywhere all over the cam gears, but I um, guess you could say I found my problem. Not sure exactly how that happened, but anyways, let's get to cutting this thing. There are several different ways that you can cut your valve cover, and if you just Google Miata valve cover cut, you can get some inspiration there. My cut is going to look a little bit funny, so I can leave that NB1 cam sensor in place. It's not the most beautiful way to do it, but it is the most functional if you have a BP4W. I'm actually going to keep my cutout piece here. I'm thinking about doing something where I could bolt it back into place and have it looking like almost factory. There seem to be very little issues reported by people running valve cover cuts as far as getting like dirt and rocks and stuff in there, which wouldn't be good, but it seems to not happen very often. But I kind of like the idea of having everything covered up after the tuning process is done. Speaking of tuning, I will also be leaving the upper timing cover off just so I have full access to these gears and then I can reinstall it once I'm finished. The last step, also quite important, is to fire the car up and make sure it runs normally. So let's see how it goes and check out these beautiful exposed cam gears. All right guys, well that is pretty much everything you need to know about installing adjustable cam gears onto your Miata engine. Now, how do you tune them and how much power are they worth? You're gonna have to wait for the next dyno video to find that out. I'll be covering everything you need to know. Don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that dyno video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.